Well, again, there are six faces to this slab, but four of the faces won't have any flux because um, the electric field, the only electric field lines are the electric field lines that are coming out from the front face or emerging from the back face over here. These electric field vectors are parallel to the top and bottom of the slab and parallel to the left and right of the slab. Um, so there won't be any flux to the top, the bottom, or the left or the right of the Gaussian surface, I should say. They're only going to be emerging perpendicular from the front face of the Gaussian surface and the back. Um, and because of symmetry, the electric field vectors should be, um, have, be uniform everywhere on this front face and this back face. That's why we want to be symmetric and draw both the front face and the back face the same distance from the center. That's how we know that they should be the same in magnitude. So how is this going to simplify? If you add up all the little pieces of area, again, you'll get the entire area again. Okay. Uh, so now all we have to do is find the amount of charge that's enclosed in this Gaussian surface. Well, remember we're going to try to use the density to do that. Well, we know that the density times the volume will give us the enclosed charge, so we need to figure out the volume now of this. So how can we figure out that volume? Um, the volume is... Well, you know, it has length x. Excellent. What do we need to multiply that by? By the area of right. space. So well, again, the volume is. The okay, that's right. On the area, but it doesn't matter what it is. Okay. That's a good point. You took yeah. the words out of my mouth. Oftentimes, gets uh, like you said, students often get hung up trying to figure out how to calculate this area. But we don't need to bother trying to calculate the area because because we drew a symmetrical surface, the areas are all going to cancel. Right. Okay. So yeah, that's a good thing to highlight in your notes. Don't get hung up about the area. It's just going to cancel anyway. All right, that's why, again, we could have drawn a cylinder instead of a box and gotten the same exact result. So that's how we're going to find the volume. Now, notice that because the Gaussian surface now is inside of the slab, the entire volume of the surface is enclosing charge. When we did the previous case that was outside of the slab, only a portion of the Gaussian surface was enclosing charge, only the portion that had a length of d. But now the entire Gaussian surface is enclosing charge. That's the big difference in why we have to do these two parts of the problem separately. So now we have E, A. So now this is going to give us that the charge is rho times A times X. Rho, A, X. Oh, and it looks like I made a mistake. Yeah, I was wondering why isn't it 2A? That was my mistake. That's right. So actually, we have to figure out both the flux emerging from the front face and the flux from the back face. So just like in the previous case, I should have put a two over here. And is that not something that cancels, that cancels each other out, like flux emerging in like positive and negative direction? That's, That's a good question. Uh, and the answer is no. Those two fluxes don't cancel. And let's see why. Remember, um, so flux can have a sign. It can be positive or negative. So fluxes could conceivably cancel. Now remember, when field is exiting from the surface, do we count that as positive or negative flux? That's right. And when field is entering a box, do we count that as positive or negative? So what could we say about the flux through the front face? Is it exiting or entering? It's exiting. So it should be positive. Yeah. And what should we say about the flux through the back face? Also, yeah. That's why they don't cancel. Okay. So there are problems. In fact, I thought, I th you probably saw a problem in the homework where fluxes did cancel. Because um, if you have electric field entering one face and exiting another, that's when the two fluxes can cancel. But here, both of these are positive. Uh, so you don't want to just say, um, so notice that the flux does not depend on the fact that this is forward and this is backward. What depends on whether you're exiting or exiting, exiting or entering the surface. Well, both of the, the flux through both faces is exiting the surface. So they don't cancel. Instead, they reinforce. But that was, a good, that was a good point. Okay, so we can't forget this too. And now the areas cancel again. That's why we didn't have to worry too much about the area. And now, this is our formula when we are inside the slab. Or, let's put it another way. 
This is the formula when our distance x from the center of the slab is less than d. The only thing is, I think in the answer there isn't a two-lump bottom. I think that the answer there is like the uh -oh. mistaken, but I shouldn't even thought that. Homework was right. So let's see, where did I go wrong? Um, let's go back to figuring out the volume here. So the volume is going to be the area times the length of the side. And the length of the side is an x, it's 2x. That's right. I got confused because here we were using d over 2, and here we were using x. So that's a good thing to have checked. Yeah, so the distance between negative d over 2 and positive d over 2 is d, but the distance from negative x to positive x is 2x. That's, that's a good point. All right, so let's go back and fix that. So then this should have been 2x, 2x. So you're right, the twos are going to cancel here. So here's our formulas for the magnitudes. If our distance from the, the center plane is less than the thickness, we use this formula. And if the distance from the center plane is greater than the thickness of the slab, that means that we're outside the slab. When we're outside the slab, here's the formula that we got earlier. Okay? All right. Well, I think that's hard, but actually you d definitely could see problems like this on the exam. This is a pretty standard type of problem, so this would be a good thing to, to save and go back over again before the test. Mm -hmm. um, because these are hard, it, it, um, it would be nice if there was a shortcut. Well, there is um, a cookbook formula for these. Um, if you take a look at the handout, we're doing plane symmetry. Well, when you're outside of the plane, you can see here's the cookbook formula. That could save us a lot of time here, although I don't know if you get full credit for using that on the test. But the cookbook formula for plane symmetry, is this what it says? Uh, yeah. yeah. All right. So let me show you how we could use this to cut, cut this problem way down. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say we were trying to use this. Well, the only difficulty in using this formula is this is the area charge density. And the problem gave us the volume charge density. So we have to figure out sigma from uh, rho. Well, if you are So one way we could do this is we could rewrite this. We have to get rid of the volume here and put this in terms of area so that we know what sigma is. 
Well, how do we figure out the volume? Well, we've been saying that the volume is the area times the distance. So I'm going back to the case where we're outside. So here we would draw a Gaussian surface that's extending before and outside of the slab. Uh, so we know that then the enclosed uh, volume, the volume of enclosed charge would be A times D. Um, but we just said that Q over A is sigma. 